All right, so kill me. I didn't get a Ryzen 7 sample until after the actual review. So this is gonna be a little belated review of the 1700 Ryzen 7. So what is the Ryzen 7? Uh, it's an eight core 16 thread CPU with a three gigahertz base clock. Max turbo speed is 3.7 gigahertz. Total L1 cache is at 768 KB. Total L2 cache, four megabytes. And the L3 cache is a whopping 16 megabytes. All Ryzen 7, 5, even 3 CPUs are all going to be unlocked, which means you can overclock the snot out of them as far as you can bring them. Um, my sample was able to go about 4.1 gigahertz with about 1.45 voltage, so that's in Project Blue Devil behind me. Uh, more to come on that one. Just finished that build. Absolutely love it. That was sponsored by AMD with the Ryzen 7 1700 sample, uh, along with Cable Mod and Swift Tech provided all the water cooling for it. So moving on back to the processor itself, uh, it does support the AM4 platform. The retail packaging does come with a Race Spire CPU cooler. It does have a RGB LED ring on it. So that's pretty cool actually for a stock cooler. I hear it's one of the better ones. I might have to bug AMD to see if I can get a uh, sample of that so I can test it against a couple of other different things. Maybe I'll take apart the PETG hardline piping here and to kind of test against that. I'm not opposed to draining the loop and trying to do all that stuff, but um, here's the cool part of the 1700 Ryzen 7. It's a 65 watt TDP. Yeah, you heard me, 65 watt TDP, impressive. Uh, for an overclocker, the 1700 is the chip to get. Don't worry about the 1700X, it's the 1800X. They're both great chips, don't get me wrong, and they're in their own right mind. But the 1700, realistically, if you can get the over the whole, I'm not buying the highest tier CPU, is the best deal of them all. Memory interface is at DDR4. It only supports dual channel memory. Uh, it is part of the Zen architecture family. Um, has AMD Sense MI technology. It uses the AMD Ryzen Master Utility, which is behind me. I've been kind of poking around with it. It's pretty cool. I'm still kind of a BIOS overclocker myself. I find that to be more stable. So as far as other features, it does support AES, AVX, FMA3, AMD Virtualization, XFR, or Extended Frequency Range. So let's talk more about what Ryzen 7 actually means. This is realistically the comeback of AMD. I remember uh, picking up a uh, Winchester 3000 plus core is my first AMD build ever. Uh, it was based off the 939 socket. It was a call to fame. Upgraded that shortly thereafter to a 3800X2 if I remember correctly. And I loved it. Overclocked the snot out of it. That was AMD's rise to fame. Um, that was going to go up against the Pentium 4s of that age. And then right shortly thereafter, Intel launched their um, 775 line with Core 2 Duo, which really just trounced AMD and they really haven't been able to uh, get back to where they were before. So uh, in terms of the FX pile driver bulldozer lineup, they really honestly didn't perform with the higher end market like Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 5 now does with uh, Intel's counterparts. Um, they're realistically just they were more budget oriented and they, they made terrific gaming machines at a great value, but they just never competed in the enthusiast line. Now fast forward to today, Ryzen 7 is, is undoubtedly the best performance king, at least in my book it is. So um, my sample was a Ryzen 7 1700. I got it up to 4.1 gigahertz with 1.45 volts, uh, relatively good overclocker. Uh, like I said before, it is the best in terms of actual price to performance is what I would consider. If you're a content creator, having eight cores and 16 threads is absolutely crucial to be able to crunch numbers, render videos, play a video in the background, play a game, a game streamer, and anyone who's using Twitch and recording and not wanting to use an external capture card and using OBS to be able to do all this stuff is actually going to be able to massively benefit from the extra cores and threads that Ryzen 7 actually provides. Moving on to what Ryzen 5 actually provides, the 1600 and 1600X is still an interesting product in themselves. 
because they actually are a six core CPU with a six core or six thread design as well too, um, in addition to the cores, so making 12 threads. So that's going to go up against the 5820K in terms of thread to thread, core to core performance. Um, overall, I've been really, 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 really happy with it. I've switched over to it as my main driver, uh, mainly from a 6700K to a 5820K and back and forth. So it's nice to actually see a little bit more red team performance on this one as well too. No pun intended, just ha 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 ha. <laughs> but it realistically is a great bang for the buck. Uh, pricing is set about $329.99 MSRP. Sometimes you'll be able to catch a $10 or $20 discount. So um, especially with that included heatsink fan that uh, AMD is including in the, most of the retail samples of the Ryzen 7 1700 CPU, it really makes it a compelling option at 65 watts. You really don't need that water cooler, but I really do believe that water cooling will fully unlock the potential of this. Uh, my sample under custom water cooling idles at around 28 degrees C, loads sub 50, so I'm completely happy, but I'm running a 280 and a 220 millimeter radiator in Project Blue Devils. So, um, that video is going to come up shortly here. I just fi finished filming a bunch of it for it, so uh, be ready for that content here. Um, and then as well, you're going to see a review from Asus, my first Asus review product that I've ever had. Uh, this came in the Ryzen 7 um, press kit. Uh, this is the Asus Crosshair 6 Hero motherboard. So pretty impressive motherboard. I realistically and all my years of tech have never touched an asus product until uh, recently an rx 460 and then uh, rx 460 strix um, and then this asus crosshair 6. totally impressed with the quality i am kind of sold on asus products so uh, love me some evga asus is now part of the welcoming family so if you're listening asus rog send some product my way <laughs> all right now I'm going to cut over to, to some preliminary benchmarks. This is going to be at stock frequency with turbo enabled, just everything right out of the box. Uh, I will be following this video up with an overclock performance, namely of Project Blue Devil. Uh, I want to see how high I get the RAM. Speaking of which, the RAM uh, I'm running right now is at 2666 or 2667, depending on what megahertz setting you have set for the, the profile. But uh, what I'm basically going to do is the RAM that I'm running in this test system or Project Blue Devil, the, which uh, the Ryzen 7 1700 is in right now, is Crucial Ballistics DDR4 3200. So I'm going to run the 3200 profile, uh, leave it at the stock frequencies, see how Ryzen 7 1700 kicks out. Uh, the test I'm going to be running is probably Cinebench R15. I'll probably run a few games such as Doom and a few other games I have installed. Uh, and then I guess we'll see from there. Demand presence and unsafe mode. Lock down and fall. Demand presence eliminated. Lock down, disengaged.
Demand Christmas and Upstate Love. Lockdown. All right, guys, it's going to conclude my review of the AMD Ryzen 7 1700 CPU. I can't recommend this CPU enough. Great CPU for content creation, gaming, and everything else in between. Um, if you want to know more information, go feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Give me a like, dislike, toss me a subscribe. That helps me out a ton. Um, until next time, guys. See you guys later. Thank <laughs> you.